would just like to say one sentence. That's right. This is the most humble day of my life. This is Graham Bowley reporting for the New York Times in London. James and Rupert Murdoch spoke for over two hours in the Select Committee hearing in the British Parliament. First of all, I would like to say as well just how sorry I am and how sorry we are uh, to particularly the victims of illegal voicemail interceptions and to their families. It was really about James shielding his father for much of the time. The MPs insisted on directing questions at Rupert Murdoch. I, I can address these in, in some detail if you would allow me. I, I will come to you. Mr. Murdoch, but it's your father who, who is responsible for corporate governance. I'd like to ask what he knew. It was very clear from the way they answered questions that their strategy used to say they didn't know about it. Mr. Murdoch, do you accept that ultimately you are responsible for this whole fiasco? No. You're not responsible. Who is responsible? The people that I trusted to run it, and then maybe the people they trusted. The MPs tried to turn the clock back to 2007 and 2008 and 9, when secretly uh, News International made payments to victims of phone hacking to stop them taking forward civil actions, which would have led to even more evidence being discovered in the legal process about the true extent of the phone hacking. Um, and it seems bizarre that somebody can have their phone hacked and get 20,000. Uh, and somebody else gets their phone hacked and they get 600,000 or a million. And sure. A big theme of the, the questioning was Murdoch's influence in Britain and the cosy relationship with politicians. Uh, why did you enter the back door at number 10 uh, when you visited the Prime Minister following the last general election? Well, because I was asked to. Politicians don't want to admit that they're courting him, even though his newspapers do sway elections. Why would that be? To avoid photographers in the front. I imagine, I don't know, I was asked, I just did what I was told. So after more than two hours of the hearing, uh, when the tension was starting to decline somewhat, suddenly a man jumped out of the, uh, the public gallery where the public was sitting and seemed to thrust a plate with uh, shaving foam at Mr Murdoch. He was intercepted by Mr Murdoch's wife and other people sitting directly behind Rupert Murdoch. Uh, and he was arrested and taken out of the hearing, which was suspended for about 15 minutes, but then resumed with an empty public gallery and Mr Murdoch had taken off his jacket, which had been covered in foam uh, during the attack. This cast a shadow over the hearing, but it continued for a few more minutes. Murdoch, Murdoch, Murdoch! The hearings captivated London and sparked protests outside Parliament, but from around the city, opinions varied on the ties between the tabloids, politicians and police. I think Murdoch has been allowed too much control of the media in the UK. I don't think Murdoch's really to blame. He's got so many different newspapers and TV stations to look after. You've got to look at the management who were there at the time. I think justice could have been served a long time ago with the inquiry a couple of years back. But now that it's all come to light, better late than never. Jeremy, very big day on the media beat. We don't generally cover a lot of news, and especially pie-throwing in Parliament. That was not an editorial comment on his performance today, was it? No, I think his performance was, by and large, received quite well. There was a question going into this, would you get cranky Rupert or contrite Rupert? And I think you got a little bit of both, but mostly you got contrition. And, and I think the headline out of this is going to be the statement that he delivered at the beginning, interrupting his son to make, this is the most humble day of my life. And we're not talking about a very humble man here. It was quite a specter seeing, you know, the, the, one of the biggest media titans in the world sort of brought low. James seemed a little out of his depth. I know he was confident, but he didn't say all that much. He took a long time to say it. I thought Rupert seemed sort of out of it. He argued over and over that News of the World was 1% of the company. The News of the World is less than 1% of our company. I employ 53,000 people around the world. I think that it kind of misses the point. This scandal is everything about this company right now, and it's all anybody's talking about, and all that investors seem to care about, too. They survived. I don't know if they built the ledge that News Corp can stand on. What about Rebecca Brooks? I think Rebecca Brooks sounded very lawyered. I think that she was only giving answers to questions that she knew wouldn't indict her later on. It also gave her a side door on questions over and over again. As you know, I can't fully address that. Unfortunately, because of the criminal procedure, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, it's possible for me to uh, infer guilt. She, I think, made the, the best of a bad set of facts. You know, the fact that she looks good, she sounds confident, she seemed to be forthright, even though she was withholding. 
Not a bad day for her. No, and she is not one to lack for confidence, and her poise carried her through that hearing.